I'm telling you, for two and a half inches, it still looks pretty good. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures, and today, besides almost being a little bit inappropriate, what we're going to check out, and I can already imagine the comments, what we're going to be checking out is this from Catalyst Machine Works, and this is the massive Droner. Now, I'm sure some people have some very strong, hard feelings about this, but what this is, this is a two and a half inch micro-sized FPV racer, and don't let it size fool you. You can do quite a lot with something so small. This thing, Catalyst Machine Works, let me just say, makes some of the best stuff in the FPV drone racing industry. And I'm gonna point out my shirt here, you know, this is the America shirt, freedom isn't free. It's about 70 bucks. I race America all the time. You know, it's my favorite track fly to take it out and rip it around, but it is an absolute premium quad. You know, it's fantastic in performance, but its price is definitely up there. What makes this one special, besides being the full FPV experience in a shrunk down tiny size, what this thing is, it absolutely rips, but it opens it up to some cheaper options as well. So they've got like a bind and fly, a couple of different versions. I'll link everything down below, but you can also get the frame, which is like, only 30 bucks, which is pretty good considering the innovation and American made frame, and it's definitely not as high priced as some of their previous premium ones. Now, what we're gonna be doing, this is like a two part review. So in this one, this is the bench breakdown. We look at the text and the specs and find out what makes this thing work. And then the part two video, which should flash up here somewhere, we're gonna jump out to the field, rip around, hit it with speed gun Sally, see what crash test how, gr crash test cow, or grumpy Trev think about, think about it and have a lot of fun. Anyway, what we should do, let's stick it on the bench, but before before we get started, I want to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters because I couldn't do this hobby. I couldn't make these videos for you guys as my career without your support. So thank you so much. And just as a way to give back to you guys, uh, we've got a little massive drone up right here to give away to you Patreon supporters. So let's cut the rambling here, stick it on the bench and get started with the massive drone review. All right, let's do it. Alrighty, so here they are on the bench, the massive droners, and I guess we're gonna be going through having a bit of an in-depth look at the frame and jumping over, look at the bind and fly, all the sorts of components, because there's a couple of different versions. You know, I'll link the frame. I think this is like the pro bind and fly version. I'll link this one. There's also like a cheaper version as well that you can check out that isn't quite as tricked out as this. But essentially, what this is, the massive droner, it's a two inch or two and a half inch micro-sized drone that's designed, you know, with some really good designs in there, I've got to say, and it's designed to get people up in the air and have a great flight experience without breaking the bank. And I mean, the core thing, this frame, it's priced at 30 bucks. I think they're doing a fantastic job when it comes to the design they've put in and also the price. So it's gonna let people, even on a budget, have a fantastic FPV experience. Now, the first thing we should do, because it's the overview, let's stick it on the scales, find out how much it's gonna weigh. So the frame itself coming in at about 23 grams. And when you've got the fully tricked out version, that's coming in at one, under 100 grams. So absolutely ridiculous. And let's throw like, a 703s battery on here it's coming in at 160 grams that's absolutely insane for the i guess the fpv experience that you're going to get with this little massive droner now one thing i want to make clear is you don't need to get this bind and fly i don't know if they're going to like me saying this but you don't need to get this bind and fly to have a great experience yes they do offer this and this thing is totally tricked out but i bet because this thing is so lightweight and such a small sort of craft you could put some cheaper components on here and still have an awesome time and that's what i like this frame sort of opens it up you can have your cheap version or also your really really tricked out version you know oh and they can even build it for you but look i'm a big fan of that and such a cheap price i think that's fantastic but what we should do let's rattle off some of the components and jump a little bit deeper into the bind and fly and quickly rattle them off on the outside you can see we've got some jam fans two and a half inch props 26 is 45 40s actually underneath we've got seven and a half thousand kv and 1106 motor so an absolutely tiny little motor i'll flash a picture on the screen and i gotta say i love how this thing looks when it's tricked out with these props it looks mint but uh that i guess that means cool what a some other people use in, in I know in New Zealand bro they say it looks choice but uh yeah I think this thing looks absolutely awesome you know with the color theme that's got going on and I'll flash a picture on the screen now a bit of an in-depth one but I think it looks really cool I would prefer some LEDs on here but let's get back on with the rest of the show you notice there's no ESCs on the arms or anything like that it is only designed this one to spin a three a 3s battery so uh that's going to be more than enough power and you're going to see that in the part two version anyway when this thing rips around because you're going to be amazed that such a small drone on a low sort of voltage 
you can have so much fun. Now if we follow that towards the middle, a really cool trend lately, well not even a trend, our hobby, we're at the stage where most of the time we're using 4 one ESCs, that's totally fantastic. So what we've got, we've got one of those HG LRC little stacks in the middle, it's an F4 ball with Betaflight OSD, all the goods, and then uh, we also have a 38 amp burst ESC, which is ridiculous when you think at the uh, sort of a 3S battery on these tiny little motors. I don't even think that if I put this on full throttle for the entire length of the battery, that I'd be able to get anywhere near enough amps to blow that ESC up. Now on top of that, I actually have a different VTX in this version. So I'm not sure what version is going to be down below, but I know they do sell these VTXs over there. And this is really cool because it's got a changeable power level, all that sort of stuff, a nice display on the top. But what I also like, you've got this little antenna part. This is one of the CMX little adapters or CCMX, whatever it is. One of these little adapters. And this is the future, I think, of our VTXs. It's really easy to click in and out. A nice, reliable link that's not going to get knocked out too easily and I think that's important too because if you're going to take this I can see a whole bunch of people racing with this thing in a warehouse getting some crazy speeds but everyone might be want to change their antenna so some people might be right hand some people might be left hand this makes it very easy that's a magpie outside my window Hey, stop making those noises. Hey, sorry about that, Maggie. I shut the window. But essentially, what you can do, you can switch out the antenna. So I've got one of the little axes, right-hand polarized on the back. But if you had a left-hand polarized, you could do that and reduce some of that sort of uh, interference you might be getting if you were in a race situation. And of course, look, I've got mine bound up to my uh, my Free Sky there, my Tyrannus with an XM Plus on the top. Nice little antenna mounts out the back, which is nice. It's not going to be getting cut up. None of your antennas are going to be getting hit by the props whatsoever. It's going to be very robust in a crash. I mean, when you're crashing this thing, the only thing that's really exposed is the props themselves. You've got some motor protection over here. Calvin, what's doing, mate? I'm just filming. Oh, uh, okay. No worries. Let me call you back. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> what have you got to say to the camera? Hello, people. Okay. All right. I'm going to cut. We're going to cut back when I uh, finish with Calvin. So let's cut back in three, two, one. Alrighty, thanks very much, Calvin, for interrupting my flow right there. But essentially, overall look, it is a fantastic little drone with some really choice kit in here, especially in this pro version. But if you want to build it up, I think you're going to have a fun time, even if you just want to get put some budget sort of stuff on here. Now, flipping it over, what we should do, let's talk about the design. So I'm going to actually put this to the side, and we're going to talk about the frame design, because this is the important part. Everything that's done in here, I think, can be replicated on this little one right here. Now, I really have to take my hat off to Catalyst Machine Works. They make some great stuff they're so innovative and what they're doing here i think is just another step in the right direction especially with this small one i love how you can take this whole thing apart with just some screws at the back if i could have a little player pliers that we hang on if I could get some pliers, that would be useful. All right, so I've taken the nuts and bolts out and the way this thing is designed and the way it goes together is really, really clever. So you simply slide this part out, then you take the two little bolts out the back, slide this bit off the front, and that's your frame. I mean, it is so simple and you've only got those two screws to worry about. Even if you put this bit back in the front, if I can do that one sec. That bit stays there, slide this bit on, you're ready to rock and roll. Now, probably one of my favorite things, I love the protection that you're gonna be getting with this bar across the front. So that's gonna be protecting your camera. And then on here, there's actually some really important parts that I wanna point out. So right here, this is where our FPV camera goes and you can see you've actually got a little slit right here, which means because FPV cameras nowadays, they come with different size lenses, some stick out more than to others. And you can simply attach it here, slide it back and forth so your lens is in the perfect position. So when you're flying around, your, your lens isn't exposed, but you're also not, if it's too far back and well protected, well, you're going to be seeing the outsides and sort of feel like you're boxed in. This solution right here lets you have the perfect FPV placement. There's a couple of little different holes up the top here if you want to zip tie some things down, all that sort of jazz. And overall, I'm a big fan of how this thing is designed. It's even got some motor protection. And they've thought about a lot of things and they've put it together in a really simple, well-designed, innovative solution. Moving on, talking about the quality, my hat's got to go off to Catalyst Machine Works. They're up there with the best of the biz again. The quality is outstanding, not only in their carbon, and I guess for a budget frame, I mean, for 30 bucks for a little frame, that's not too bad or whatsoever. Usually they're more of a premium price for a premium quad. And these days, well, it looks like they're offering a premium experience at a bit of a more budget cost. So I'm a big fan of that. The price and the quality is absolutely outstanding. And when you get the Bynum Fly, I'm going to say, if you get this one, the pro version, the stuff in here is specced to the 
Wazoo. So you get some fantastic components in here. And of course, as always, I'm sure Catalyst Machine Works fans can drop your comments down below. Their quality in their soldering, all that sort of stuff is absolutely outstanding and second to none. So 10 out of 10 there, guys. Well done. And then let's talk about the pros and the cons. So moving on, and uh, I'm probably going to talk about the frame and some of the cons. Well... It's really hard to think about it. I guess it's not gonna carry a GoPro or anything like that, but that's not what this is designed for. Then, then moving on to the pros, well, it's gonna be cheaper, and even on the batteries, because it's recommended for a 3S. It's not gonna break too much. You don't need too much FAA registration. It's super lightweight. And I really can't see too many things wrong with this drone. I think it's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be very, very fast for what it is. And you're gonna have a great FPV experience. And whether you trick it out with a full, I guess, expert or pro version, whether you just build your own budget one, this drone has so many things going for it. I guess one con, and look, it's not really this frame's fault. If you're wanting to fly this thing indoors, I think you're gonna definitely need some bigger spaces. So don't buy this thing if you've got a really small apartment or something like that. Something like a tiny whoop would be much better suited. This, don't let it size fool you. For three, two and a half inches, this thing is gonna absolutely scream. And I can't wait to show you that in the part two. So look, if you want it for an indoor drone, don't buy this one because that's not what this version is. So there it is. There was the bench breakdown of the two inch massive drone or two and a half inch massive drone. And I'm a big fan. I think they're doing it right. And even this day, catering to some more budget options and letting people sort of build their own, definitely a step in the right direction. And they're sort of innovating in the hobby with some really cool different designs. Nobody's really done it like this before, but I think it's going to hold up very, very well. So very exciting times indeed. Alrighty. So there it is. There's my bench breakdown of the two and a half inch or two inch, depending on what props you put on there. Two and a half inch, massive droner, and my hat's gotta go off to Catalyst Machine Works. They're continuing to push the envelope, innovate some stuff, and this time offer some cheaper versions. You know, I know there's a couple of different bind and flies, all that sort of stuff, but for the innovation that's gone into here, you know, 30 bucks for a frame that is very well designed, I think is very, I guess, an attractive option for a lot of people out there. Because look, I loved America, but that was a lot more expensive. Something in this price range with the FPV experience you're gonna get, that's what we want in this hobby. So anyway, drop your comments down below. What do you guys think about it? Go and watch that part two, because that should be live as well when you're watching that. And trust me, this thing absolutely screams. So on that, subscribe for more FPV related content. Put all your inappropriate innuendos down below, down below about what you can do with two and a half inches. And as always, happy flying. Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.